I'm really excited to do this with you um, because I love everything about you and I love working with you. And I started to think about when I first met you, which was um, <laughs> over 20 years ago when uh, Dan and- um, Wait, 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 let me, let, me, let me help you here. <laughs> Dan saw me in a movie called yeah. Money Train. You yeah. were not my agent at the time. We weren't producing partners at the time. You just, he's just like, I think this girl is something. And you, if I remember on my side, became kind of obsessed and was calling my manager at the time over and over and over. And like, I want to represent this girl. And you just saw something. And I just, on my side, it was more like, Tsunami. Woman, yeah, <laughs> what's this woman who keeps calling? And then it turned out that Benny Medina uh, bought me to you, and I went to see a bunch of agents. Benny was my new manager, and I was making my first album, and I had done a movie or two at that time. Yeah. And uh, and the way we met was, uh, he took me to ICM. And you were in there with a bunch of other agents, maybe two or three was, other people. I was, big, I was a pretty big agent at the time. I mean, I represented some. Yeah, I know you were. You were a great agent and already very well known. And and Benny bought me into who he t thought were the top agents in the business. And so I went around to two or three of the top agencies, yours being one of them. And I met you. And at the end of it, although Benny may not admit this, he was thinking, I think you should go to this agency. And I said, wow. uh, I yeah. said, uh, I said, no, I want to, I want Elaine. I like that lady from ICM. And he's like, really? He's like, let me take you back to the other agency one more time. <laughs> and it did not change my mind. And we wound up, he wound up representing me for many years as an agent before we started producing together. And, and, and is that how you remember it? Yeah, I, I remember it as, and what's interesting is the agent that Benny wanted you to go to, Kevin Ubain, is the is your agent now. So yes. it, it all sort of full circle. Love. Yeah, and uh, life is, oh, you always wind up where you're supposed to be. So I wound up with the privilege of having both of you in my life. Yeah, how lucky am I? How lucky are we? So yeah, I represented you until I, I stopped being an agent in 2000, and I, um, and, and, and I, you know, I was always a closet writer and I wanted to be creative. And Joe Roth gave me the opportunity to um, run Revolution Studios on the East Coast. And my very first movie, I, I remember you sitting in my living room and me saying, you know, John Hughes has written this script, it, you know, rest in peace, John Hughes. And it was a bit of a fairy tale. It was yeah. called Chamber Me. And it yes. was literally Cinderella, remember, with, with yes. the evil stepsisters. And you and I started talking and dreaming about, if you remember, what if it's a woman who's a maid with her nose pressed to the glass and she lived outside and... and, and she's got to be Puerto Rican from the Bronx because those are the people who work in the hotels because I had a boyfriend who worked in the hotel down at the Hilton when we lived in the Bronx. And so... We started riffing on the whole story of and what they were actually staying at my apartment. And once again, Dan, who's figuring on the story, remembers you and I literally outlining Made in Manhattan. And I called Joe and I, I told him what we came up with. And, and, and you were hot at the time I and mean, really hot. And, and I said, and I think we can get Jennifer to do this. And they were angling for you to do Gigli at the same time. It was like I was, it was a right. for you. And so, um, you know, I, I pitched it to John and he was like, I like it this way, but we ended up doing this and we went to another writer. And well, I wound up doing both movies, one yeah. super successful and one maybe not so much. <laughs> but once again, the two things, right? It's like me and Kevin, yeah. it, it all came, it was all supposed to be for different reasons, it right? All and, and so we made Made in Manhattan, but you and I in my living room over the course of a week. Well, that was the first movie we produced together. It was the first movie we did together. And it was it was probably my favorite movie because it was my first that I produced and it had, it was close to my heart. And because we birthed it, we, we really did yeah. talk about it. We went and found Wayne Wang who was lovely and who was, you know, and we gave it a little edge and we, we, we really worked hard in the casting on that with, with Rafe Fines and, and, um, um, oh my God, the lovely, um, uh, 
I, I can't Tasha remember. Richardson. Well, no, of course not. Tasha Re rest her soul and and but the, but the Bob then, Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. It, and Stanley Tucci and and and, and Amy Sedaris and. Yeah. It was just an amazing cast and an amazing experience that, that Deb Schindler produced with me and taught me how to do. And um, I loved working with you. And, and it was very and, organic, I think. Even yeah. as you, as my agent, it was something that was very organic. It was just like we clicked right away. And when we started producing together and started dreaming of stories, and you've always had such an amazing eye for not just talent when you were an agent, but also for great material and also for what that talent should be doing, for what that artist should do next. And you're a visionary in that way, but then come to find out you also write, you also you know, um, are an amazing producer on the ground, boots on the ground producer, getting things done and also elevating material. And that's what I love, because I love to elevate everything I do and try to get the most quality out of any kind of creative thing that I take on. And, and we are kindred spirits in that way. And I think that's why we've been able to do so much and have been together now for 20 something years. Yeah, well, thank you. And I feel, I honestly, it sounds crazy to say it, but I, when I think back to Made in Manhattan, it was when I realized how um, you made me better. Um, I, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know it all. And you, it was, uh, it, God, this sounds so fucking sappy, but y you made me better and it was a- No, I don't think it's sappy. I think the best relationships are that. I think the ones right. that really are worth anything are that. You make each other better. You, you make, we make each other better. Right, and, but it was a template for how we worked because then, then, then after Made in Manhattan, which was uh, my most successful, I, both, both of our most successful films, um, after that, I, I got sick and um, I had breast cancer and you, oh my goodness, I won't, it, it, and you flew in. Nobody knows, people don't know this about you. They don't know what a good friend you are. They don't, <laughs> it, cause it, was, it was three years after we had done Made in Manhattan. I, would, I had done a bunch of other movies for Revolution and you were living in Miami and you heard, I called you, and I said, you know, my life, I got, I have breast cancer. And you were, what? And you found out when my chemo schedule was and you um, you flew in and it made me very popular on the chemo round. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be, let, let me cycle with her. But you brought your sweet face, my name, but you brought your sweet face clothing and you brought your record, your, your songs that you were gonna put on whatever album you were working on at the time. And you played them for me and you rubbed my bald head and you made me understand that this was just a left turn. It wasn't an end. It was a detour. And yeah, what you I think did that's what's important about the women in our life, right? The women in our life, you know, are the ones who are kind of there for us in the hardest of times, even more than our partners in life sometimes. And 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 our definitely family. more than our, our partners. Girlfriends are women. Yeah, the women is the thing. That's why I'm glad we're doing this with Variety and it is speaking and highlighting women because the relationships we have as women with other women are probably the strongest ones we get to have in our in our lives. And it's 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 such a privilege to be able to have a partner like you. I um uh, I have a few questions for you. But you know, people don't know that about you, Jen, and I feel like I want to talk about I want that. To know who you are, that you're this person who uh, boots talk about boots on the ground, who's a friend, who says, What do you need? Who shows up, who doesn't just phone it in or send some beautiful flowers, who who, who makes you believe there's a tomorrow. You talk about limitless with Emmy, right? You talk about being limitless in your life, and it's very important to you that the women in your life know that they can do anything. Yes. It's very important to you that, you know, um, I wrote Second Act because of you. Because you had once said the only thing holding you back, I forget what it was, we were talking about something and you went and you realized the only thing holding you back is you. Nobody can fucking stop you from doing it. You're stopping you. You don't want to do it, don't do it. You want to do it, do it. But it's you, you're the one with the course. That's you. And people have to understand that. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things about you people. I think it's the secret to kind of what we do together as producers and the material that we're drawn to is, you know me so well, 
and you go, this is what you should be doing next. And you look at who I am and the message that I kind of, as an artist, want to put out into the world, the different things in the ways that I live that you know are really going to resonate with me. And then we create projects that can say that or do that. Um, well, you did that with Marry Me. If you remember Benny Medina, who's our the third part of our tricycle, our tricycle, yeah. who holds us both up and, and allows us both to shine, um, and who we both love. Benny. That he said, he, he said, uh, hey, Elaine, there's some pitch. It's a television project. See what you think. And I, this is, I might be seven years ago. I don't know. But I, I, I know I was living at your house because I, I live in New York. And so at the time, I didn't even have a place in L.A. So I, I, I was staying at your house. And I took this pitch, which was um, at the time, and I say it respectfully, really cliched characters that want, it was a TV show that they wanted to do based on a graphic novel. And I was playing with it in my head on that long drive at the time you lived in Hidden Hills and I, from Westwood to Hidden Hills. And I was just thinking about it. And I came in and I said, so I got this pitch today. And I love telling you every single thing that happens so that we yes. can sort it through. And and I told you it, and you and and I said, so forget this part, but think about this because it's really about destiny and about love and about celebrity and 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 you know, sort of stepping outside of celebrity. And you designed, I won't wreck the ending for people who haven't seen it, but after we talked about it, you you literally again made a Manhattan design the ending. And when people see this movie, you dictate like I could have written it down and you dictated that ending and you dictated by the way many scenes in there were based on your insight it wasn't it wasn't based on your life it was based on your insight as what it would feel to be one of the most famous people on the planet and to be watched and prodded and judged and made fun of and what it feels like I think yeah, as an actor, you have a kind of responsibility to portray those things. But as a producer, you have to make sure that it's on the page and that everybody else and the director that you hire understands what you're trying to portray. And we have to get that. So as a, as producers, and maybe people don't know this, is we work very, very hard on the script. You know, I know that the industry knows that, but other people who might see this right. don't understand that we actually come up with an idea we find a writer that understands or we feel understands what it is the 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 story is we work very closely with them uh elaine more closely than i on the writing part and then they give it to me and then i do what she just said i kind of pepper in like you're missing this nuance this is what this should try to say you're missing this and together we kind of get it as perfect or as great as we can before we start shooting. So that's a big part of our producing process, I think. Um, and, and it's a shorthand we have because we, we, we in trends, I know that whatever Jennifer tells me there, she's true, she, she's one of the most honest people I've ever met, far more <laughs> honest than I am. And and she, she really is. And there's absolute truth in what she says. And I won't tell them the project because we haven't announced it yet, but we have an amazing new project at um, Netflix that we're going to be doing. And we're working with this phenomenal director who we love and this phenomenal writer, both women. So all a, women. <laughs> yeah, we, were on, we were on this call with the, with, with the woman who runs our company, Catherine, and us, and these two women. And what's funny is they both called me after separately and said, Jesus, she's so smart. What, you know, because you're great with story. Because really, the best thing is that people, you know, maybe don't. <laughs> yeah, maybe they don't think you're so smart. They, exactly. so they don't think I'm so smart. That's what it is. That's my big superpower. That's your superpower. <laughs> um, you know, what, what, what's, what's interesting about us is we always, we always lean into finding the best people. And we're sort of agnostic about it. It's not like, let's go find the best women. But the truth is that we have been fortunate enough, even on Shades of Blue. A lot of times the best person for the job is a woman. <laughs> and then there it is. But funnily enough, our last three movies, 
uh, are, are that. And our next one, it's, it's our next, no, our next two. Well, well, not our next one. Our next one, we have a male director and then the Let's two go after back, go back. Hustlers was a woman director. Marry me is a woman a director. Then the mother is going to be a woman director. And then one we haven't announced is going to be a woman director, but right. in between is a guy. Right. Um, um, and, and you know, what's, what's fun is that we just read a book and, um, and, and it, it's such a great book that I got so excited and I called Jen, she was like, you know, in the tub or something. And I like pitched it for her and I went, oh my God, we have got to get our hands on this. And, 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 and that's another one that we're going to, um, looks like we're going to do with Netflix that, that. I think we're going to have a female write it. So I think it's important for us. You know, it's a great time. I think women have found their voice in a way that they haven't ever before. And, and, and that means female storytellers and telling our stories in our way. And from a woman's point of view, I mean, I think hustlers would have been a very, very different movie had it been directed by a man. By the way, hustlers was edited by a woman um, directed by a woman, uh, set design. And there were so many women on it. And here's the thing. If we have the ability to hire women and women of color, it's our obligation to look there because others haven't. Yeah. To push and it's our forward. honor. Yeah. So, you know, that, that when is something. I started in the industry that, that, you know, I, I think when you started representing me, you started realizing like there is a difference. I don't think you even remember that. I remember we talked about that, but when I started, you know, I would always go in for what they would call, you know, the May, the May, the Rosie Perez type role, the, you know, dishwasher, the this, the that. And uh, it was very, and I was like, I don't want to do that. And I had to kind of break out of that and, and convince somebody to put me in the first romantic comedy, which I think was the wedding planner. And yeah. I remember, you know, Adam Shankman put me in that movie and it was, it was, uh, you know, oh, okay. Jennifer Lopez. Oh, all right. And I was, again, like you said, kind of hot at the time and you were my agent and you were asking for a certain price that you thought I merited and they were buckling back on us. And then he came to one of my record signings. And he said, give her whatever she wants. <laughs> you know, the line was around the block. It, it was the power and, of it was the power of no. Yeah. And it was just the, the the idea that somebody like me from my background, who was a woman, could garner that type of, you know, price in this industry. And it was a big deal. And and you broke that. You didn't even just break it for women. And I don't know if people know this, that you were a Julia Roberts agent and you broke, you got her the 20 million salary, which broke the glass ceiling for women in the industry to make as much as men did, that you did that. And, and for me, because I am the Latin woman who has made the most on a movie as well. So, and you pushed just as hard for me as you did for anybody. And um, it didn't matter. You know what I found in representing you and in partnering with you, which as you know, has has, has been frustrating for me because I have represented superstars um, before. I, first of all, I think that when you do more than one thing in this world, people marginalize you, um, especially if you're a woman and especially if you're a woman of color. And it infuriates me that, you know, um, they judge you harshly. Well, if you sing, you can't act. And if you act, you can't dance. And I think Streisand, felt it as well, certainly in her time. But I think you are uniquely, um, you, you are uniquely judged for that. And it bothered me. And what was so impressive to me is that you went, okay, I'll show them. I'll, that's why I wrote Watch Me in, in, in Second Act, because here's the thing. You were a dancer who became an actor and an actor who became a singer and a singer who became a producer, who became a brand, who became a billionaire, who became, who, who set the pattern for all of these people. Haters hate until they copy and they copy or they try to, but they couldn't hang on. And it's- so I think I think of something as, you, as you're saying this, I think about 2000 and end of 2014 into 2015, I think when the boy next door came out and it was our first 
project together since Made in Manhattan, I think. I think, right? And um, was that for a movie? movie? For a movie, yeah. yeah and yeah. nobody would make a movie with me that time. I was doing American Idol, and you know, I, I, records were back on the charts. I was doing really well. It's many years into my career now, I had had a lull. And now I was kind of, you know, making a little bit of a, a splash again. American Idol was a huge show. And like I said, I had a number one record and and uh, with On the Floor. And But nobody was making movies with me and they didn't want to. <laughs> and you came into my life and is when we I asked you to come run my production company. And you were like, oh, let me see. And I was like, I really need you in my life. And I really want you to do this. And you were like, I'm going to do it. And the first thing you said was, uh, you know, nobody basically wants to hire you, <laughs> you know, for, for movies right now. And we were, we were up against that in a way we couldn't get traction. And then you got this little script, the boy next door, and you started working on it with the writer and, uh, and we had, to do, we had to do it. It was a $4 million budget and I did it for free because we had to bank on ourselves. We had to go, listen, if we're going to get back in this game, you know, forget about what you made on your last movie a few years back. That's not happening. Here's, here's what we need to do. And I said, I'm, I'll do it. I'll do it for free. I'll do it for free and I'll bank on myself and, and, uh, and, and we'll see how it does. And we made a, a back end deal and we made this movie in 28 days and it, it put us, it did get us a little bit of noise and put us back on the map and set us on a course. Every every single thing we did, we it, before that we we made. I think I started working with you again in 2012, and before that we we made a deal with NBCU and we found a, a, a series that was yeah, kind of stayed. interesting. And we every step we took, it was just a, it was an architecture, you know. And everything combat, combines with some, everything else. But what I think is amazing, and you know. It's funny because people say to me about the Oscars, are you, are you Elaine upset for Jen? And I was, and then I said, you know, it's so much bigger that she didn't get it because it's a statement really on the industry. And, and I can't remember who was nominated or who won or who didn't, but I, I can. Always, no, <laughs> I will always remember how great your performance was and that you should have been. And to me, Jen, oddly, one of the best performances I've ever seen, ever, is the performance that you give with Mark Anthony in El Cantante, when you play Pucci, his wife, Hector <laughs> yeah. Laveau's. Um, the, the follow pick of, of Hector Lebeau, which is, I, it's funny, I almost posted something on Instagram the other day because it was such an amazing, I would urge anybody to to watch that and study it. And I can't wait. That was the first movie I produced on my own without you. Without and me. That, that was, that before was, you and I started producing together yeah. and I realized I wanted to produce and that I could produce. And, you know, so that was an exciting thing. Well, you, you I'm glad really, that you, you like really, that. I, lo I love the acting in it. Um, I, know, I know, I know we've talked about it before, but yeah, that you brought it up is, yeah. It's fantastic. And I, I just would just tell anybody to watch it. I love it. What the thing about working with you that I love so much is, is the why not of it all is the, is, is that you can be, is that you can do anything. And when, <laughs> Anybody watching this who's an, an agent who wants to be a producer or a producer who wants to be a writer or, in your case, uh, a dancer who wants to be a singer, who wants to be an actor, who wants to be a producer, who wants to be an international icon, the only thing stopping you is you. You know, Marry Me was such our, was such our baby, Jen. It, 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 we worked on it for six years, working hard between studios and regimes and writers. And um, in your mind, you were the one who who said, you know, we should go get Maluma. You, you were the one who knew how good he would be in this, that he could do this. And the music, I can't wait for people to hear these songs. Well, that's the thing. The way the project started, like Elaine said, you know, they pitched it to her as a TV show. We decided to do it as a movie uh, about celebrity, about love, about life. 
And also it, it kind of combined things that I did, which was people kind of know me for romantic comedies, but also I got to, to make an album with this movie, which I've never done before. So we got to combine the music and the performing with the movies and the acting. And it was a, a really special project. And that was Elaine's kind of brainchild. Like you need to sing and act and, and dance and do everything you do in, in a movie. And we haven't seen that enough. So um, that's what this project, uh, kind of what it spawned from. And then it turned into what it is, which is an album and a movie with Owen Wilson and Maluma. And Maluma was, you know, the, that part, you know, of kind of the guy who, yeah, I don't want to give everything away. That part um, could have been a lot of different people. And we needed him to be someone who could be believable as a singer and an international star. And so we went the gamut, right? We, we thought about tons of different people from John Mayer to Drake to Adam Levine and all this. And we were like, wait a minute, why, why don't we get a Latin star? Why don't we do that and make, a, and I said, I would love to make, I would love to sing in English and Spanish in this movie. Like, can we, can we do that? And that's when Maluma's name that's when i bought up maluma's name and everybody you know did their investigating found out he was huge and that uh he has an incredible star quality you and came up with the idea of second chances. of what you said okay it would be interesting if when in that scene that you know after um you know we all know what it's about we they'll see the trailer hopefully by this time this thing airs that it, you know he's her Beyonce, who she finds out on the day of their wedding, he's been cheating with her assistant. Yeah. And, um, and, and but when when in that scene on the rooftop, you said to Maluma, maybe you can write a song about second chances, which yeah. I think that song is fantastic, Segundo. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, all of the songs and the album is so, you know, specifically tailored to the film. I'm really proud of that part of it since uh you know we pulled that song together along with the people and, and you talk know, about how you guys did the music because it was yeah. so interesting you were on tour i, think I was, was in the world I, was on, tour. I was on the it's my party tour last summer right and i knew we would be filming and we were looking for the perfect songs and i would every night go back to my hotel room in russia or wherever i was and sit there and listen to songs or ideas or tracks or just, you know, whatever, just anything that anybody wanted to send because we had this story and we'd send the script to different producers that we liked and songwriters. And we got a lot of different things. And I must have gone through about, I don't know, over 100 to 150 different ideas and narrowed it down to, you know, uh, I don't know, seven or eight songs that I felt. You're being modest though, because we I have a word that I use or probably overuse called the Zamboni. You know, the guy on the ice who smooths it. Jennifer hears something or reads something and then she begins to Zamboni it. She says, maybe we put a chorus in here. Maybe we can lay this. She, she's rewriting these things, whether or not you want to say that. You're, re, you're writing these songs. You, you well, know, I just put my it. own stamp on it. Okay. It has to work for me i have to understand it and if i think the beginnings of an idea is there i won't just go oh this is not good enough i'll try to get it there if i believe in it enough and sometimes something comes and it's perfect like you know sometimes the scene comes in and you're like oh exactly what i wanted it to be and sometimes it's not but if it is it's always easier <laughs> she and you, have, every you have to have the, the wherewithal to not zamboni there to go yeah, that's no, great that's that's, true. that's fine. I love it. And, uh, and we've made uh, between me and Maluma, uh, it's mostly my songs on the album, but Maluma, it, it does, does a few songs as well. And it's, it's an amazing album. And Maluma was a big, big part, uh, uh of this, of this project. When Jennifer heard the, the, the we, there was a song, there is a song she has in her, in her arsenal that someday she'll release that I love and I wanted it in this movie in the worst way. Like when I was yeah. selling the movie, you know, cause I'm, I was an agent, so I'm always an agent. So I have to set these things up. They, they don't all happen so easily. In fact, nothing has happened easily. But you know, I ha in selling the movie, I would even tease the song I love so much and I wanted it so badly. And Jennifer heard um, on my way, 
um, and called me and said, we're not going to use this, this other song that I loved. She goes, and it's kind of like you knew you didn't have to Zamboni that other one. You knew it, you knew it was right, and you were right. It's yeah, and I love that song. I wrote the song you're talking about yeah. with, with another writer, Alina, and I love that song, and I've always wanted to use it for something, and I thought this was going to be the project. It was the basis of this album, and it never wound up being on the album, but you have to be able to let things go when they're not the perfect thing. You can't get married to it. <laughs> because not everything is meant to be. There's a there's a great line. There's a great Mary line. Me. There's a great line in our movie that says, um, sit in the question long enough and the answer finds you, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I think that's such a metaphor for life that when you're in a place of confusion, sort of allow it to all fall around you and there you'll find your clarity. We're, we're, I think Jennifer and I have an overlap in that we both believe things happen as they're supposed to. That, um, you know, um, all of all of the crazy traffic patterns of life lead you to exactly where you're supposed to be. So what did the success of Hustlers mean for you? You've done so much, but what, what was that, that at that time? What did it mean? It meant validation. It was yeah. so hard to set that project up. We got passes from every studio out there, from every financier out there. Lorene had an amazing, I knew this role was for you in a way I'd never seen anything. I knew you could eat it alive. And once again, you designed that whole opening, that whole opening for Ramona was you. And God bless Lorene for putting it in there but um you know everybody passed they all said you know um uh, no one's going to want to go see a movie where women scam men i guess they're wrong except for adam bolson and it it felt like validation and it felt like people could see you and and they wanted to see you more and and they um understood the depth of what you could do and by the way People don't know this, but you know, you went out and got Cardi in that movie, and you went out and got Lizzo in that movie. Um, I mean, Lizzo was 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 Lorraine's idea, um, but you reached out, Cardi. You were talking to her on the phone every single day about what she could do and how she could do it, and asking us to change the schedule. You were deeply involved in the script. You were involved in the choreography of the scene. It it people don't realize what a producer you are because you graciously allow others to do it, but you were <laughs> intimately involved with the structure of who Ramona was and the arc of who Ramona needed to be, and you were loving and lovely to Constance as Ramona was to Destiny. Um, I was very proud of her. I was very proud to produce that movie with her, and I was very proud that it, it got its due. It broke us. Mm -hmm.